In this video, we'll go over how to use the different CAD tools available in Chief Architect and the various methods we have to draw and edit them. CAD is an integral part of the software, and many of these techniques can be applied to different types of objects in the program. We can find all the tools we'll be going over in the CAD menu at the top of the program. First, let's click on the Point tool, click Place Point, and click in your plan. Points can't be selected to move or edit like other objects. If I place multiple points, we'll notice the last one I placed is a darker gray. This is the currently selected point. If I go back to the Select Objects tool, pressing Delete on my keyboard when I have nothing selected, will delete the currently selected point. If I keep pressing Delete, it will delete the points in the order I place them. We can also go to the Points menu and click Delete Temporary Points. We have another way of placing points. First, let's place one temporary point, and then go back to the CAD menu, go to Points, and click Input Point. In here, we can enter coordinates for new points, either starting from the plan origin, or, if we have a point placed, from the current point. We can move a certain x and y distance away from the current point, or we can choose Absolute Location. We can also use this tool to place a series of points. Clicking Next will place a point and let us enter in new values for the next point. We can continue doing so until we're finished and click OK. We can also place a different kind of point, called a Point Marker. Let's go back to the CAD menu, Points, and click Point Marker. These points are objects. Unlike regular points, they will show up when printing and can be selected, moved, and resized. To draw lines, we'll go to the CAD menu, down to Lines, and click Draw Line. Click and drag to draw the line. We can press the space bar to go back to select mode, or click the Select Objects tool. Click on the line to select it, and we'll see the edit handles appear, which allow us to move, reshape, or extend from the object we've selected. The square edit handle that rests on the line is the move edit handle. The square handles on the end are the end edit handles that let us extend or move the endpoints of the CAD line. The diamond edit handle beyond the end of the line lets us draw new segments of the same line. Click and drag, and you'll get a new line segment. The triangle edit handle lets us rotate the entire shape. Just like inputting points, we can also input lines. Go to the CAD menu, Lines, and click Input Line. Just like before, it will either use the currently active temporary point, or it will default to the origin of your plan if no points exist. If you enter a new coordinate and click Next, you can continue entering points to make a polyline. Once you're done, click OK. Once we have two or more lines connected, the shape becomes a polyline. When we select it, we can see each segment has its own edit handle with a diamond-shaped edit handle that acts as the joint between the segments. If we go back to the Line tool, let's draw another segment, making sure to hover over the end of the line until we see the endpoint snap indicators. While drawing the lines, if you're in the middle of drawing a section and you realize you don't want the segment, you can right-click on your mouse or press the Escape key on your keyboard, and it will remove that segment before it's drawn. If we draw two more lines to make a closed rectangle, we'll now have a closed polyline. We can tell we've made a closed polyline by the interior becoming shaded or highlighted when it's selected. Just like if we click on one of the segments of the open polyline, if we click on one of the edges of the closed polyline, the edit handle will grow and become red on that side. 
This is an indicator that shows us which edge is selected. We can also see temporary dimensions appear, measuring from our selected side of the polyline to the other side. With the side that we want to move selected, if we click on that temporary dimension line, we can enter a new value to resize the shape. We can do the same with the other side. We can move the polyline with the center edit handle and see that it only moves in certain directions. That's due to angle snaps. We can temporarily disable all snaps to move or resize an object freely by holding the control key on our keyboard or on a Mac, hold the command key. Now we can move the shape in any direction that we want. In addition to the line tools, we have arc tools. To draw an arc, go to the CAD menu, arcs, and click draw arc. Click and drag, and we'll see an arc form following the movements of our mouse until we release. We can also change a line into an arc or an arc back into a straight line. For example, if we click on one of the edges of our closed polyline, we can click on the change line arc button on the edit toolbar, and we can see that this edge has been changed into an arc. We can then move the arc with the square edit handle or change the radius or direction of the arc with the triangle edit handle that rests on the arc or click the button again to change it back to a line. We also have multiple tools to draw circles. In the CAD menu, go to circles and click on the first circle tool. Clicking and dragging will make a circle on the plan with the distance dragged determining the diameter. If we use the circle about center tool, wherever you click will be the center of the circle and the distance dragged will be the circle's radius. We can also draw ovals or ellipses. Back in the CAD menu, then circles, click oval and click and drag in our plan view. If we select it, we can use the different edit handles to resize or reshape the oval. The ellipse tool acts similarly to the oval tool, but the shape will always remain as a true ellipse and won't deform in the same ways an oval will. Another way to make curved lines is with the spline tool. Go to the CAD menu and click spline. Click and drag, and at first you'll just see a straight line drawn. But, still using the spline tool, Draw another segment from the end of the first line, and you'll see the lines conform to make a curved line that follows the path of the straight lines. You can continue adding segments, and the shape will continue adding them to the overall curve, and if we fully close off the shape, we'll get a spline polyline. Similar to a closed polyline, we can click and drag the diamond edit handles at each corner to reshape or move the polyline, or use the square edit handle in the middle to move the entire shape. We can also draw already formed closed polylines. In the CAD menu, go to Boxes, and choose Rectangular Polyline. Click and drag to form the opposite corners of a closed polyline. We can draw boxes from the same section in the CAD menu. Boxes don't have the same editing options as polylines, but have a number of options for more specific use cases. For example, if we draw a box, then open its specification, we can change its style to generate as one of the other CAD styles boxes can be used for, like making a cross box, a blocking box, or making it appear as insulation. When a polyline is selected, there are a number of different modifications we can make to it using the edit toolbar at the bottom of the program. This toolbar is specific to the object we have selected and holds all the tools we can use to edit this specific object with. We can remove a line from any polyline by first having that line selected, then clicking the disconnect selected edge button. Now that line is treated as a single CAD line, which we can delete, and the remaining polyline is now open. 
with that polyline selected, we can click the close polyline button and that will create a single line connecting the endpoints to close the shape. Another tool we have in the edit toolbar is the break line tool. This allows us to break any line and create two separate segments. Click on the break line tool and click on one of the edges. This will create a diamond edit handle at the break. This is a break point. From here, we can either pull the diamond away from the edge to create a new single corner, or we can pull one of the edges on either side of the break point to create two new corners. If a shape has breaks or corners we don't want, and the corner hasn't been pulled out, we can remove the point with the Simplify Polyline tool. With the polyline selected, click on Simplify Polyline, and it will remove any break points that aren't their own corners yet. We can also change the break tool to perform a complete break, which will disconnect the shape, making it no longer closed. To do this, click on the break tool, and when the edit toolbar changes, click on the add complete break toggle. Then, wherever you click on the polyline, it will be broken, resulting in two endpoints. That concludes our video on the basics of CAD drawing. To learn more, Use the built-in help in the program, or check out some of our other videos on using various CAD tools in more detail.